What's up, everyone? It's your favorite apostates. I'm McKay. I'm Jordan. And I have to show you guys something right off the bat because it's working right now. And if I we don't do it right it. now, we might have missed our chance already. So check this out. Check out how cuddly these boys are. You can't even see Tom's face. It is buried in baloney. Oh, 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 oh we're getting live action. Let me tell you. Oh, oh, they're so cute. Snuggly boys. How Let me tell you. Freaking cute are they? The the just like a week ago or so, I had commented to Jordan. I was like, Jordan, these cats don't. It seems like they don't even like each other anymore. Like they never hang out. It's always just baloney, and Tom just fucks off for the whole day. And then we got them a new toy. And all of a sudden, they are just pals again. So we're here for it. They're just nonstop cuddles, constant. Like, it is so funny. Hit the like button for the orange boys. Hit the like button for those orange cats. We'll keep you updated on their position. Ugh. Hello, everyone. That's fine. That's fine. Lots of members in the chat tonight. So lovely to see all of you. And patrons, I'm sure, but you and can't patrons, see the patrons as easily because they don't I get a little all in the same category. signifier. We get our awesome patrons and our awesome The toy was members. from Amazon. I found it on Amazon. It was fairly It was dope. Uh, I could probably pull it up real quick. Hold on. I was looking at it because they already destroyed one of the parts. So I was looking if I could get like replacements. Yeah, they've already destroyed one of the parts. So that that tracks. Yeah, and then Kazoo got it tangled in his hair, so that was that was excellent. fun. Had to cut a little bit of hair out. Oh, one of my favorite things. They're just being so snuggly. I I'll throw it in the it. chat real quick. Okay, McKay will link uh, it in the I'll chat. I'll link it and I'll show you guys. This isn't in our in our Amazon store, so no, we're this not is getting just, commissions off this. This is this just, is. <laughs> if you'd like a cute cat toy, here you go. Where? Okay. Fundy Fridays. Sorry, I was goofing with stuff, and now I'm. Yes, we have a very it. fun presentation oh, today. I hope you are very excited about it. It's the beginning of many with the book that we're talking about here. So, yeah, just so you know, this me, is part one. Let me pull it up in here so you guys can see this. You are bra You are browsing. One moment, please. Longtime patrons, yes, we love our captcha? patrons and our members. I'm not even signing in. Why do I have to do a captcha just to view Amazon? K C B N M F. Oh, there we go. Here we go. We're we're making. That's oh, my face. It's Jordan. Sorry. Oh, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is the one right here. I think it was on sale when Jordan got it because I don't remember it being forty dollars, but. Honestly, we don't spend like an an exorbitant amount of money on cat toys because we have a human child we that do. we already <laughs> spend an exorbitant amount of money on. Um, so yeah, check it out. I'll throw it in the chat real quick so anybody who wants it can get it. Jordan Porchek, baby, yeah, right. <laughs> let's go. Oh. All right, here you go. There you go. If you want a cat toy. That's the one. We got you hooked up. Hook up. Yeah, these cats were going crazy over it for days at a time. So, and right now, right now the the bell part fell off, but they would still be going crazy for it if uh, the bell were still attached. That's true. So, anywho, do you have any mm, announcements? Who? Oh, right at the top here. Speaking of Fun Day, Fundy Fridays. Fun Day Fridays. Fun Day Fridays. Jen and James will return next week to next week's live stream for our now it I can say it now second annual Halloween live stream. So tune in for that. We're going to be goofing around. I just tested something that Jen had shared with me and it works. So Jen, you know what I'm talking about. That's what we're going to be doing among other things and uh yeah, it should be pretty fun. 
and crazy. Of course, Jen and James are just our favorite people on YouTube, if not the entire internet. So, Jen, which cat? There's that. Jen says, can you yell at my cat for scratching me just now? Hey, don't scratch. <laughs> Gentle. <laughs> don't do it, baloney. Yeah. Gentle. That's how I taught Bologna to let me pet his tummy is every time I'd like go for his tummy, he'd start like clawing at me or whatever. And I just go gentle. So now whenever he bites, he just goes. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Oh, okay. Any other we announcements you can think of? Cheap recommendations for toddler toys and activity or activities to keep my own personal kazoo busy when I'm dealing with the newborn. Uh, Pinterest. Pinterest. Bobby, welcome to Terrestrial Kingdom. So, like, tons of stuff that's cheap and free. And then, I don't know if you follow... Let's see. There's another account that I follow that she does a lot of... She has a ton of good ideas. Um, so, her Instagram account is Busy Toddler. She's a former teacher. And all... Her Instagram is just full of, like toddler activities but most of them are super easy and won't take any time so at busy toddler on instagram is her unfortunately we have a special interests kind of child so outside of those special interests we are usually kind of in the same boat we're like what do we do and unfortunately those special interests are usually while we're in the car yeah so although today has uh he's developed a new special interest which is Fire alarms and license other plates. fire safety things. Oh, license plates too. License yeah. plates. Yeah. Uh, oh, and smoke detectors. Yeah. Smoke detectors. So, surely, when it's time to replace our smoke detector batteries, he will be the first to let us know on that front. Indeed. Grid bless Grid. you all. Grid bless you, LB. Welcome to terrest- uh, Telestial Kingdom. Kingdom. Yes. Our patrons and members, we're getting our exclusive videos for the month ready we have a cooking with mckay planned and then we'll do a little fun halloween walkthrough as much as we can without yeah, showing yeah, you yeah. where our house is <laughs> so and how we were constructing all our yeah because we've already put a bunch of footage together so so we'll be doing that so stay tuned for that if you're a member if you're a patron you will get access to that very shortly if you want to see that Make sure yeah. You remember, Three dollars. Also, I'm, I've been talking about a movie night, and we just need to get it on the schedule, so we can watch um, one of the movies that we bought at Deseret Book with Jen and James when they came out to Utah when we lived there at the beginning of the year. So, uh, Kazoo is dressing up for Halloween. He's dressing up as chicken because he that's what he, he wanted, wanted to, to be. He wanted to be a chicken like two months ago. Yeah, and we kept clarifying, "Hey, what do you want to be for Halloween? A chicken. A chicken." All right. Okay. I'm not gonna argue <laughs> Sounds <that>. good. <laughs> I have an announcement. Jordan, you really helped me work through my religious shit and help me not feel like I'm going to hell just being intimate with my husband. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's very nice of you to say, and that makes me happy because no one should have to feel that We way. say, hell yeah, but hell's not a real place. But we say it anyway. We say it anyway. Good bless you, Elena. Welcome to the terrestrial kingdom. I didn't straighten my hair after I washed it last night, so it's like a hot mess. Nice. Not the more movies. <laughs> more movies anyway shall we get on with it i love public library story time we need to take him to the library over. oh yeah so that was what i wanted to do most of is the little activities they got there anyway okay anyway we've been rambling about things become a member join the patron patreon whatever the hell it's called we appreciate all of you who do that because you enable us to do this Marissa Lee, we see you and we're sorry for your loss. We hope that you are doing all right. Obviously, all right is kind of high expectation for that is heartbreaking, your uh, situation. I'm so sorry. Okay. Um, Let's get on with it. Jordan, do you want to give us a brief little explanation about what we're looking at here? Yes. Gail Dedrick, thank you for the super chat. Your token old says hi, but I want to say that <laughs> Vision of Glory goes hand in hand with the rise of Q slash Trump. Same folks, same need. 
Definitely. Yep. I didn't even touch on that today, but that is yeah. Absolutely this is the like case. not even like a comprehensive thing. There's more. To no, be this added is yet. literally just the beginning. So we just started Cassandra a few minutes ago. So you made it. Fear not. In good time. Um, Hot Ham Radio. Visions of Glory Time. I just discovered you last month. Binged all your videos. Thank you. I'm sorry. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hurry up, Julia. Um, so by demand, we are talking about Visions of Glory, which if you recall, if you've been here for a minute, I read Visions of Glory when I was Mormon, when I was a member, and it furthered my religious OCD, my scrupulosity, and increased my anxiety to an insane point. So I'll talk about that. But we're going to talk about why this is important. One, it's funny. Like, this shit is just funny. Yeah. You can't make it up. It's hilarious. But two, this book is so much deeper than just being a weird book that Mormons, some yeah. Mormons are obsessed with. It has a wild connection to so much of like big figures in Mormondom, which if you clicked on the episode, you see in the the title, in the title, we've got Jody, Check it. we've got Ruby, we've got Chad and Lori Daybell, Jody. we've got Tim Ballard. So all really the big names in the news right now, at least three of Timmer. them. And then the Daybells formerly, but Chad's yeah. trial's coming up. I guess up, not, not that formerly. Lori's she trial. Got, yeah. She got sentenced not too long ago. Yeah. You're and right. didn't she quote, stuff out of this book or something no she quoted or book related. of mormon oh, okay i'm pretty sure i think so we're going to go into all of this here's my plan this book is dense there's a lot of stuff in it i'm not gonna have you read it or read it page for page because half of this is stupid book of mormon doctrine weird yeah. doctrine shit and I'm Mormon. He was Mormon. We know how this works. If it's boring Mormon doctrine, I'm not going to explain it to you because it's it's boring. If it's interesting, then I'll explain it to you. Yeah. So that's how I've made this into digestible amounts of information is stripping away the stuff that you might already know that's probably irrelevant or is super boring and give you more. Yeah. Also, if you want, we're going to go through this much slower than I saw John and Mormon Stories did an episode similarly talking about Visions of Glory. They did a few hours worth of an episode, but they did the whole book in, I think, two episodes. So if you want to get through it quicker, maybe they're the route to go. But if you want to get through it with us, you know, we tend to have a bit more. We drag. <laughs> we drag and we Just have like more humor. Just like this guy does. John is funny, but we make things funny. I'm sorry, John. We are definitely funnier. He's fine. He's fine. He's Objective. funny. I'm just kidding. But we have to make it funny. Otherwise, it's really depressing to listen to. Yeah. So if it that's why you're here, then that's why you're here. And great. And we love you. And if you've seen it and you want to stay anyway, we love you anyway. So Love you. But I don't want you to miss anything important in this book because even some of the quotes are just like absolutely... Unhinged. Barbarically insane. So... That's the purpose of why we're here. Thus, I have created another PowerPoint. Check it out. This Looks is the beautiful. Book. Let's get into it. It's giving outer darkness. Just kidding. It is. Uh, just a quick note before we continue for my side of the story, since Jordan didn't want to pass the time over to me real quick. Jordan, it, this instilled a lot of anxiety for Jordan. She read the book. I never read it, and from the moment I heard about it, I was like, e this is a crock of shit. I never bought into this. Never cared to read it or even entertain any of the ideas that were in it. Did so your that is read the, it? I don't think so. I've never seen it in I've my house. I've never heard him talk about it. Um, so that is the duality of Mormon belief, especially when it, when it comes to this book. There are people who, like, buy into it hardcore, and then there are people who are also like this is apostasy this is fake this is dumb indeed anyway let's get on with it let's do it so partly with what mckay just said here's why we're going to talk about this number one i don't know if this is an updated statistic but there's been over a hundred thousand copies of this sold and i know this isn't like you know new york times bestseller level 
but that is a lot. Yeah. Especially for a Mormon book that's meant and intended for Mormon audiences. Yeah, let's see. Utah population. Sage Davis. Three welcome million. Welcome to the Terrestrial Kingdom. Thank you. Jill Spagar. So your super chat. Thank you. So, I mean, we're talking about, like, if everybody in Utah read this book, that would be, like, 3% of the population. Yeah. So, and obviously I know that it wasn't only limited to Utah, but, like, the distribution of this book and... Uh, the nature of that and that's maybe why i think my parents didn't read this because it wasn't so readily available maybe because like just looking at the publisher website they were teamed up with um stores like sam's club and costco mm -hmm. so i'm not sure if you could find this at if you if they did have it at costco but it's possible that they might have had it at costco's in utah for the local population because you see a lot of uh, Mormon books at uh, in the book section at Costco and places like that as well as it's gone now but it was also being sold at Deseret Book which Indeed. is owned by the church so hi Marky um so I call it Mormon crack with the caveat that McKay gave there are plenty of Mormons who have read this book that think that it's blasphemy that think that it's absolutely ridiculous and are very offended by it and then there's mormons that are like this is just basically like mormon fan fiction and it's stupid and i'm not going to engage with it so vision fan fiction with levels with like levels. fan fiction based off of fan fiction yes so visions of glory is very polarizing within the mormon community for that reason like i've never encountered somebody who's like meh on visions of glory like it's either you think it's complete bullshit or you're like this is amazing so yeah. keep that in mind for a lot of Mormons. It is kind of like Mormon crack and they soak it in. So ha, soak, soak <laughs> funny. Okay. So commonly read among Mormon members, many of them interpret the events to be more literal. We're going to talk about the book and how it's structured, but part of the book is based on what's going to happen in the future during the second coming shortly, like preceding the second coming and everything that happens in the millennium and all of that nonsense. So a lot of the book's events are based in the future, and so many Mormons have interpreted them to be literal. So that also kind of changes the way that they view things. Um, and then something else concerning that's come of Visions of Glory is Visions of Glory has, like, infiltrated the prepper community, like the Mormon prepper community, to a really big degree. So the Mormon prepper community being the people that, not just people who have food storage, but people who, like have provisions to last for decades are able to leave in the middle of the night with no hesitation because they have everything they need getting invitations to live in tent cities like those kinds of things that's the mormon prepper community that i'm talking tent about. cities in tents yeah. like we're talking about the likes of like if you're familiar with chad and Lori daybell and julie Rowe, like it's the that community is a circle right yeah so that's also concerning and mormon preppers and it's different from just people who have food storage that's different that's just like it, it relatively is, normal behavior it is also explicitly discouraged at this point by yes, the it's in, church it's in the books now yeah so um, they they say don't don't hoard weapons and food yeah. and stuff like that extreme yeah yeah we're talking about people that build like bunkers and stuff like that yeah so the very severe end of things not the people who just have food storage yeah. so those people also overlap quite intensely with conservatism and yeah. conspiracy theory yeah. and whatnot so like mentioned in the title we've got Lori and chad daybell who are involved in here who have mentioned visions of glory apparently when Lori was served papers this was the book that she was reading which is Ooh. quite sad to me um and then we've got Visions of Glory was recently referenced by Tim Ballard in the wake of his insanity. If you're not caught up on Tim, we have a whole episode on him. And then we've got potential overlap with Rudy. Rudy. Here I am doing it again. Rufy and Jody's beliefs. You go, Rudy. And actually a direct connection between the author or the person who experiences the near-death experiences in the book and Jody. Uh-oh. It's all connected, my friends. Hot Ham Radio. Welcome. Welcome. Grid, bless, grid bless you. And then 
many problematic things addressed in this book. I cannot even list them all out in form because each time we get to them, your mind will be more blown. But the number one that comes to mind is blood atonement. So do you want to explain what blood atonement is? Um, blood atonement is something in the mainstream Brighamite um, sect of Mormonism, which is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, an idea that was practiced in the very early days in the wake of the assassination of Joseph Smith, especially it was something that was taught by Brigham Young. Essentially, the idea is that some sins are so heinous that they cannot be atoned by repentance through Jesus Christ and that you have to pay for your sins with your own blood, um, meaning that you would have to die to, in order to be able to be forgiven of those sins. Now, this is a, a quote unquote antiquated belief. They are sweeping this under the rug. If you ask any of the current membership, they don't know what you're talking about. You'll, they'll think you're crazy or whatever. But this 100% was a thing that they used to did, do in the early days of Utah where they would, like adultery and things like that, they would punish by blood, blood atonement. I had no so. idea what blood atonement was until we left the church. Yep, I'd never heard of it. And Mormons who do know about it sort of take the same approach, a lot of them, with things like polygamy where it's like, you know, it wasn't right or they shouldn't have been doing it and that's yeah. why they don't do it anymore. Which is or... like a crazy thing because they also like, oh, if the prophet ever led us astray, then God would stop him. But like if but the Brigham prophet Young says that people. people should kill in order to uh, help them repent for them si their sins. Then it's fine. Then, yeah. Don't you think that God would have done something instead of letting him die at a ripe old age of... Uh, the shit that he was putting in his enemas like yeah that's something okay I buddy we've ever talked about before anyway um so anyway, we talked about joseph or brigham's if enemas. you've ever ordered from exmo candle company then you know about brigham's Shout enemas out. okay so next slide okay so i had to include this slide because i thought it was funny so i read this book when i was a believing mormon these are photos from when i was a believing mormon all of these are from when i was in college um, when I was active in the church, very faithful, the photos on the left are actually when I got my endowments. <clears throat> so when I did the crazy cult ceremony, yep, that one. So that was the day on the left was the day that I did that. That's outside the temple. That's me also touching the temple. And then we have the big old statue in Salt Lake that's not there anymore. Oh yeah. They got rid of it. Huh? They got rid of it. That's crazy. It was actually really cool. Like, you can't see it in the photo, but the whole, like, it's a dome it's a rotunda. type structure. And yeah. it, like, the entire thing is painted. Um, With all the stars yeah. and planets and stuff like that. Totally. I, I think that's probably to quell the idea of, oh, you get your own planet or whatever. Maybe. Could be. I don't know. Um. So... That's why I wanted to include this just for reference, because I read this book when I was a believing Mormon, and that was a horrible, horrible idea. But for somebody like Jordan, yes, for somebody like me who has really bad anxiety, especially I had really bad anxiety about the second coming. Um, and so as does many people, when there's something that you can't control me. that brings you anxiety, a lot of us seek out more information to try to make ourselves feel better because then if we're at least doing something about it, then it gives us the illusion of more control. But usually what happens is that more information just spirals us further, which is exactly what happened with this book. And so this single-handedly made my religious OCD and scrupulosity, especially around the second coming, so much worse. And the same thing with earthquakes, like one of the, we moved out of Utah for a lot of reasons, but earthquakes was one of them because there is a reference to a massive earthquake in this book that basically brings on Jesus. Yeah. So. And, and that's not like, that's not like totally off base or out of this world because you talk to anybody in Utah and uh, geologists are expecting because of the fault that runs down essentially the center of Utah, a massive earthquake in an indeterminate amount of time so oh it's will not you move us out of the way unfounded yeah i was going to and i was going to say just you know look at this i mean how did how did i riz this up oh my god stop 
I have a baby what bottle did I pop do? that I'm eating, you guys. So I'm sorry. I'm gonna try to eat away from my microphone, but eat quietly. So, anyways, a lot of people don't like that. I blocked out people in the photos for obvious reasons because they're my family and they don't talk to me. So, but. They could think I for that. just wanted to include that this book is damaging, not only because of the thing that it talks about, but because of the way things are set up. And I read this book because I think my family had read it. I think my mom gave it to me or maybe I made her read it. I don't remember, but both of us know, ended up did. reading it at one point. Yeah. So anywho, just keep that in mind that I now have the perspective of the person who looks at it now and is like, this is bonkers. And the person who basically literally took this as scripture vaguely when i was a member so yeah your mom definitely bought into it oh 100 percent. okay do you want to talk about these two all right here are our players we have john pontius who is the author of the book it is published as him authoring the book um i can't see there's a oh he's a mormon author of what's vog oh visions of glory He's and then other books too. we have Tom Harrison, which I don't know anybody who adds the H in there. When that's they his actual name Tom. is Thomas, but he goes by Tom. But that's how he spells it. Literally every Tom on the planet Earth goes T-O-M. As I know, far as I so know. Dumb. Apologies to Our anybody Tom. who's out there. Yeah, he, he is just T-O-M. I'm telling you right now. He told me. Um, <laughs> Uh, he is the subject of Visions of Glory, and he is a therapist, an LCSW. It Allegedly. Is, yes. Um, so when this was written, he went under the pseudonym of Spencer because at the time he did not want any of this to be connected to him. He did just wanted to put these things out there. He was under the impression that him <laughs> and John had crossed paths uh, because it was time for him to share these things. I broke that up. Okay, so we'll get back to that. But those are our guys. Um, Here's the thing with the license thing. Tom has advanced degrees. I know that he was an LCSW at one point. But I looked up, because Utah has a license lookup feature that you can look up anybody. Like, literally anybody who's licensed. Like, you can look me up. And so everybody's licensing information is available. So I looked him up and it said that his licensing is expired. As of last you year, say it was last year, 2020, like September of 2022. Now licensing can be wonky. Sometimes shit doesn't get updated. I'm pretty sure I didn't even look, but I'm pretty sure Jody still says she's practicing and they revoked that or made her revoke it for temporary purposes, whatever. So Take that for what it's worth. I don't know what that means. I don't know if he's still practicing. But from the book, he was a therapist and he primarily worked with children. So there you go. Anyway, next. Our other references. Obviously, if you've been here recently, you already know Timothy Ballard, the former CEO and the founder of OUR, Operation Underground Railroad, Jody Hildebrandt and Ruby Frankie. Um, they are in jail, uh, being charged with child abuse, uh, which could land them felony sentencing in prison. Also, Chad and Lori Daybell. Ch uh, Lori Daybell uh, is in prison. Or, is she already serving? She's sentenced. She's been sentenced. What, what was her sentence? Like, uh... Uh, life, I don't think, with parole, but not oh, yeah. death penalty. Um, and then uh, jury's still out on Chad, but he's this summer. They uh, murdered multiple people and kind of just ran away. Lori's children, yeah, and Chad's ex-wife. Yep. So, uh, yeah, not doing. Our players not even really don't really have the uh, the greatest uh, public image right now. Uh, especially this one, she definitely is Dunzo forever. And these people, I mean, it's up for debate, but there's a lot of evidence suggesting that Chad's Dunzo. People. There's no doubt on that. Oh, yeah. He's he's Dunzo. Um, Becca Ingram Bryant, keep up the good work, y'all. Your perspectives are so interesting. I learned so much from your videos. Got to go watch The Hobbit. We'll catch the replay. Thank you for being here, and thank you for your super Shout chat. out. We, we love you. That. Um, okay. Eternal Core Conference. Eternal Core is a... Um, 
it's a mental health like a coalition or bringing, something like that bringing the way that jody said it was it's bringing god back into mental health or something yeah like so it i i mean they have like a facebook group it's kind of like connections but specifically for if you're if you're in this i'm gonna sorry i'm gonna hit them hit you with the quotes mental health professionals um did you get this from their their youtube channel because this is on their youtube channel that one is yeah it's the, it the banner right. uh so yeah this is the eternal core conference but this is their eternal core youtube channel so keep in banner. mind this was from 2019 this conference yep so as you'll see in there as i have circled we've got tammy ballard we've got tom who had all these visions thom thom and then we've got jody all at the same conference in 2019 yep tell me how this shit isn't all connected so this group is run by tom and uh in quotation or in parentheses spencer spencer and um some other guy who i don't know but it sounds like i listened to one of the episodes that they had jody on and I, it wasn't really worth like bringing up and listening to any excerpts or anything like that but they were just talking about mental health kind of what stuff. does it further demonstrate though that not only did she go to this conference but they have a personal yeah, relationship they have a personal relationship like jody and the person who had these crazy ass experiences yeah have a personal relationship and i mean she went on and she was talking the um oh, yeah, these uh the pictures were the... potato level quality yeah potato level the uh topic or what the episode was titled was the counterfeit of control and she was going in and she was talking about connections and talking about uh truth and distortion and all of these things so um it wasn't like she had to mask up or anything like that. Also, interestingly enough, I don't know if we've ever mentioned this, but uh, Jody's <laughs> LinkedIn and possibly, quite possibly her resume said that she was working from at Connections basically from the end of her uh, internship until present day. <laughs> And the reason being, did you just spill that all over your... No, I'm laughing at how stupid she is. Oh, yeah. So I was like, that's weird. Did she just want to omit that the the like the like other work she was doing because it got her in trouble? The way she doesn't omit that is because she changed the name of her bit. She rebranded her private practice into Connections. And she said that on this podcast. So I was like, was oh, my God, it time. makes all the sense. And it was right at the time when she was getting in trouble for the the breach of um confidentiality confidentiality and everything like that bingo so it all lines up as soon as shit hit the fan she rebranded and stopped being a counselor and decided to be a mental fitness trainer or whatever the hell she wants that is. So, okay. So anyway, there's there's some uh, there's a clip from this, little... this conference of Jody speaking in 2019, and we're not going to watch the whole thing. I just want to watch like the first minute or two because i just want you to hear how she talks what she talks about since this was a few years ago all right whoa too far too far it wasn't going i'm sorry is our sound on let's make sure thank you thank you how's the sound for everybody the back we good shut up Jody. shitty awesome oh okay sorry hold on hold on sorry guys <laughs> i went to pause it and it uh went to the next slide thank you thank you how's the sound for everybody in the back we good awesome okay so i am so excited like i could barely sleep last night Man, because i get to up come and talk to you about god <laughs> and how god is um, how we need to bring God back into the mental health field because he is the, thing, the, the person, the being that heals us. And so let me tell you a little bit about what I've been doing. For the last 20 years, I've been trying to figure out how to help my clientele. I've been working with tens of thousands of people for 20 years, and I've been asking God about how to help heal them from this array of mental and Red flag. If you have a mental health professional and they're consulting God on how to heal, how to help you, 
I don't know. I feel like they maybe should go back to school. That's that's just my opinion. Or maybe they should just not practice. Yeah. An emotional illness, okay? So all of us know that depression, anxiety, suicidality, all these presenting issues and symptoms that come into your office or in your families or maybe are even inside you. And so I have been on this journey trying to understand how to use principles that are God's in helping people heal. So let me back up and talk to you about when I was a child. So I was raised, I was the sixth of seven children. I have one sister. So I had all these brothers ahead of me. And my parents were both emotionally shut down. Now, I didn't know that as a child, but now I do. They were emotionally completely not available for me or for any of, our, of the other children. And so chaos went on in our house a lot. And none of us were really allowed to emote other than to get angry um, or to just stuff it. Let's and go. And so I learned how to be really nice. <laughs> I learned how to be kind and helpful and gracious and good, right? So some of you who are clinicians are probably like, whoa, she's setting herself up for addiction. Sure enough, I ended up with an eating disorder, right? I started trying to control everything because I had no outlet to emote my emotions. I had nobody there to validate me and say, yeah, that makes sense that when your brother, you know, puts you into a pretzel, that that would hurt and that you would want to tell him stop. You don't like that. I wasn't allowed to do that. So I went on my own journey. I went to therapists and tried to figure out, you know, one, what was going on with me, um, and two, how to heal it. And unfortunately, and I would say inadvertently, because I met some lovely people, and what they did is they validated what I'll call my victim. They reinforced me to stay where I'm at and said, yeah, you have every right to feel this way. And I didn't know any better. I thought that that would help me get better, is if they said, yeah, that this is reasonable why you feel the way you do. And I didn't have anyone, at least I didn't hear it in my head, give me a transitional bridge to move over into what I now know is truth. So I would leave my therapy sessions and I would feel heard but I'd still go back into my eating disorder behaviors and control and being really nice and helpful and friendly. I didn't really heal. My soul was <laughs> healing. So okay, I went into graduate school so um, sick. I just thought... Fuck off. What? <laughs> YouTube's having a moment, apparently. Are we good? Little screen. Yeah, we're fine. YouTube is just having a moment. Is that all we needed? Yeah. I really don't want to hear her talk anymore. No, I I brought I wanted to watch at least a little bit because one, this was the first I had ever heard of her mentioning having an eating disorder. Um, which is interesting to me. Yeah, it's kind of interesting that she didn't include that in her book. Yeah, she didn't include that in her book. And so that's something that I thought she would have mentioned in there, but she didn't. And then lots of just like empathy and awareness that she apparently can't extend to anyone else so it's just the irony of it will like never be lost on me that she's yeah. talking about you know yeah just, it's not cool when my brother does that to me and but then she does this to Ruby's yeah. kids just further proves the point that she's a demon bro there's like no redemption yeah and if you have a therapist that you feel heard but you feel like you're not making progress then you find a new therapist and or you communicate that because it's not because they were doing anything wrong. It's like I just mm. anyway. So much going on there. So then we've got Lori and Chad. So singing. If you were <laughs> if you're aware, Lori well not Lori, but Chad was an author was a I will call him a Mormon author because there's a lot of them that call themselves that um and he was writing books which is kind of how him and Lori got connected to begin with but Chad has published many Mormon books and they're all terrible and they got picked up again by the prepper community and kind of existed in that time and space but many of the things that were discussed in Visions of Glory and the belief system, like the belief systems that were talked about and some of the weird visiony doctrine stuff were things that came up with, um, that came up in the book that then Lori and Chad enacted in their stupid little weird pseudo religion-y thing that they had going on. And so there's more to come on this. I don't want to give away things to describe them to you, but just know that 
once we get to that, especially if you're familiar with the two of them, you're like, oh my God. Somebody said, is this a book Cody Brown would read? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Ramen noodle. I guess it would fit. It would get fit all his... up in this. Yeah. I have a Cody joke in here that's really funny. Let's go. And then we have Timmy. So you can Timmy. talk about this one. Uh, Tim Ballard, alleged abuser. A bunch of people in the last the last stream we did, they were just so up in arms. They're like, this is all alleged. What happened to pro innocent until pro oh, really? proven guilty? Really? A whole bunch of comments like that. I don't read comments. Yeah, you, you shouldn't <laughs> because it is just ridiculous. For your mental health, you shouldn't yeah. read comments. Like, okay, I... I love the idea surrounding innocent until proven guilty. However, and we said that just because you can't be proven guilty does not mean that you did not cr commit a crime. Part two of that being, we believe survivors. Sorry. Period. It is what it is. And another lawsuit came out the day after we did our freaking stream because that's always yeah. how it works. So with a couple that came forward that talked about how Tim ruined their marriage. Anyway, so check out that one. It was the last live stream we did two weeks mm -hmm. ago. Uh, but he has said that Tom uh, slash Spencer told him that he is part of his visions, which I'm sure he got just fucking rock hard over because this is a guy that loves to hear about himself. Bobby said, can Cody Brown read? No, Robin has to read it to him. <laughs> Whatever it is. <laughs> And he has to try to Knife decode to what the she's kidneys. saying when she's crying. <laughs> okay, anyway, next slide. All right, you want to read this? Visions of Glory, One Man's Astonishing Account of the Last Days. So that's the uh, the subtitle of Visions of Glory. This was published in 2012 by Cedar Fort Incorporated, which is a niche LDS publishing company. It was sold at Deseret Book. Uh, I don't know when they took it off the shelves, um, but if you search up visions of glory deseret book there is a hyperlink to it but it just takes you to yeah it's not on the website anymore so and i know it gone. used to be because they used to sell digital copies on the deseret book website because remember deseret book is the yeah. publishing company owned by the church and well so... and where else would you have you wouldn't have bought this anywhere else no for definitely deseret not book. Um, let's see. John Pontius invites you to walk with Spencer as he witnesses in stunning detail the miraculous events of the last days long prophesied in ancient scripture, the return of the 10 tribes, the building of the new Jerusalem, the millennial day and celestialization of the earth, as well as other astounding future events. That's straight off the Amazon description. Does it not sound like bullshit right off the bat miku's headphones are mod my uncle asked for us to send it to him in prison <laughs> jesus christ oh god okay <laughs> so to further my point of this this is a small small snapshot taken from reddit this actually came from the r slash mormon subreddit and some from xmo but i thought this was interesting people talking about visions of glory and what it did to them or their families if you want to read those that book was absolutely excuse me that book was absolutely true as scripture for me i had the most spiritual experience of my life reading that one but i was prone to right-wing conspiratorial thinking and fantastic uh end day, end of days claims i was a prepper for a while and then one day i was it was just all a fantasy i think it i was desperately trying to align my beliefs with the world around me and that just and that meant jesus has got to come sooner or later and the good and happy things we were promised isn't until then and then another commenter says oh it's alive and well for my in-laws my brother-in-law recently called my husband to exclaim in his terrifying narcissistic war cry the thing spencer missed in his vision is that a huge tidal wave is going to take out everything from california to utah <laughs> i laughed out loud and that then another it. as a side note recently i saw a person <laughs> who used to be in our ward and she was at work and she was telling another customer uh, about how California is going to drop into the ocean and there's just going to be like an island of it left. These are just the ridiculous claims that, I mean, even one, one of the apostles or a prophet, I can't remember who it was, but you can find this pretty easily if you just look. But he mentioned that there was a problem with how gullible 
the Mormons in Utah were because it, they can just you can get them to believe like the most ridiculous stuff. Uh, and then the final commenter says, my whole family was obsessed with this book. I always thought it was super messed up. And then I have three more. I agree. Oh, three more. Okay, cool. Or two more. <clears throat> I loved that book. And for a while, it was more than uh, more real than scripture. But the ward next to us in Arizona was taken so taken by the book, the stake had a co- had to come in and do a fifth Sunday lesson to tell people to knock it off. I read <laughs> all of John Pontius's books. They weren't as good as this one for me. I think it. I think I needed certainty around the last day's crap, which I never liked in the church, anyways. And the stories scared me straight in a way. Didn't take in uh didn't take though which is good and that that totally resonates with me because in a lot of situations in the mormon church i mean there's certainty around almost everything except for things that they can't boldly claim like the last days the last days yeah because that's limited by what the bible says which is kind of funny because joseph smith went in and made his own edits to the bible in order to fit his stupid book of mormon shit in there (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, but a lot of the things, there's nothing left up to certainty, which I mean, as humans, we don't want to live in the gray. We don't want to live in uncertainty. If we have an answer and it seems plausible, then a lot of times we're going to cling to that. Um, so I don't blame anybody for, you know, falling victim to this kind of garbage in 2015 ish. My dad bought six copies of that book to give to all of his mostly adult kids, for big kid family home evening. I believe it was his way of establishing priesthood authority over my siblings. And I, after the horrendous, horrendous divorce between himself and my mom. But what I want to illustrate with these two, especially is just how taken Mormons get with this book. Like how lost in the sauce Mormons can get like so bad to the point that a whole congregation had to get a smack in the face for getting way too balls deep in visions of glory. Yep. And it happens more often than you think. Like if you have leaders who look at this book and are like, yeah, this is probably bullshit. You're going to have leaders that are like, this is 100% hearsay. None of this is doctrine and none of this is scripture. Like don't get invested into it. Yeah. And, but people take it so, so literally because Mormons are capable of individual revelation and we are told that that individual revelation can't dictate other people's behavior or try to influence or manipulate, but that's what they do with that information. Yeah. And so it's not out of the realm for people to be like, well, this is his personal revelation and he's Mormon. Yeah, and it's and so talking about honest. stuff like that's beyond just him. So how could it be untrue if God revealed it to him? Exactly. Even if it does have like other people in that context. Exactly. All right. The beginning. Will you go ahead with this? Mm -hmm. I really need to go to the bathroom, which is unheard of. But here I am. How dare you? Sorry. How very dare you? How dare you dare me? Okay. Is the thing set up so I can skip? Okay. Ow. Okay. So I'm going to move this over here. Anyway, do they teach that individual revelation is on equal level with the Book of Mormon and the Bible? No, with a asterisk because it gets really dicey because if you have your own revelation that's given to you, That revelation comes from God. And so if I have revelation that comes from God, why am I necessarily going to deny that? So things get kind of murky there. But what they do is they say that nobody in Mormonism or in the church will ever get revelation that is contrary to God's design or is contrary to, you know, the rules within the church. So like, Chad and Lori Daybell saying they got this revelation that he's the prophet and all this shit. They excommunicated his ass. And in my opinion, I can't remember when his excommunication was. It was, I don't remember if he was being 
looked at as a suspect for any of this or not at the time. But it wouldn't have mattered because the the big overarching thing, in my opinion, in Chad's case is the reason that Chad got booted, if not the horrible things that he did later on, it's because he called himself a prophet. He claimed that he was getting revelation that was contrary to the teachings of the church and was going against the prophet's everything else that's been constructed. The church doesn't care much for things other than when people are making a scene or causing drama with the 12, like we've seen with Tim Ballard, or if it's like super contrary to doctrine. And that's a fail safe because what they can do is then when Chad and Lori do this crazy heinous shit, they're like, well, they were getting revelation, but it wasn't from God. And because that's contrary yeah. to the teachings of the church, if that makes they sense. They must have been deceived by an angel of the devil or some shit like that. And that's why, Carolina, you just said, if it doesn't go against scripture, then consider it true. I mean, and if you're a true believing Mormon and you're doing all the things, checking all the boxes, yeah. and then you get revelation, you don't really have a ton of reason to believe that like, you're being deceived, basically. And this is why, of my opinion, Mormons similar to other religions, fall into the conservatism to extremism pipeline. Because Mormons can get individual revelation without a lot of, yeah, like, anything to hold it up against. Yeah. You know? And there's <laughs> there's nothing that's like, oh, yeah, revelation is not intrusive thoughts about you killing your entire family. But for some people, they think, like, yeah. especially people within the church, I've had clients who scrupulosity and the religious, like, the intrusive thoughts, like, they're just intrusive thoughts, right? They come as a result of anxiety or different things going on in our lives or brain chemistry, whatever you want to call it. But Mormonism can brand that shit yeah. as... Oh, that's not your internal monologue. That's not your own thoughts. That is... That's coming from God or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's so, a dangerous place to be. Yeah, when those... When those dangerous kind of thoughts come around then what's stopping you from thinking oh this is what god is telling me to do exactly if you can't get homemade revelation store-bought is fine casey <laughs> <laughs> i love this that's i love that okay you can read this oh you haven't read it yet no man i go potty I and all you didn't even <laughs> make it past one slide caroline had a question so Jeez. i answered it okay the beginning in the beginning the experience is written about in this book all belong to Spencer, which is the pseudonym for Tom Harrison, who wanted his identity to be private when the book was written. Spencer is a lifelong member of the church. He presently uh, serves as an ordinance worker in the temple and has served in Bishop Rick's high councils, stake positions, and many other callings. He holds three advanced degrees. Indeed. So there you go. And then to add to what you Spencer. said earlier. Spencer. Spencer has asked that I not use his real name for several reasons. First, he sustains the living prophet and his preeminent calling. And uh, he has never considered that these visions of the future f uh, were for or about the Latter-day Church. He is therefore reluctant to release these visions in such a way that they may appear to have uh, to be an attempt to influence the church in any way. Second, he didn't want to become the focal point of people's questions or answer uh, or hope for answers. He doesn't want to be anyone's guru. He doesn't want to give firesides or do public speaking about his experiences. Which is hilarious because he actually did. <laughs> the clout got to his head. It really did. He did end up doing firesides. Which, do you want to explain what a fireside is? <laughs> okay, so, let's uh, let's jump over here real quick. The firesides, I don't know. I feel like other other Christian denominations do firesides. I just but don't essentially, think they call it that. Yeah, it's just like outside of normal church meetings, if you wanted to like have a special speaker come or something like that, you would do it on a fireside or with a fireside. It, which is not during normal church meetings or things like that. Sometimes they'll have fifth Sunday things, which are usually reserved for like church approved or church mandated things where they have a special speaker come in and 
rather than going to your normal classes, you would go to this fifth Sunday lesson. Um, but yeah, they have like firesides for youth. And I remember common growing up was the uh, the youth standards fireside growing up where they come in and just kind of reiterate a lot of the standards that youth should be following and stuff it's of that It's more nature. fun than it sounds. Uh, no, it is not more fun than it sounds. <laughs> It's not more fun than it sounds. You it know is what I mean. less fun than because it sounds. Because you think about a fireside and it's like, oh, it's there fun. Is, like everybody chilling yeah. around a fire, vibing. No. 99.9% .9 of the time, there is no flames. There is not even wood. You are usually in the chapel. Calling it a fireside is such a bait and switch. Because when I was a kid, before I was going food. to firesides, it was like, oh, that sounds fun. Sitting around a campfire and talking about Jesus, whatever. Uh, but yeah, that is usually not what it is. You have to. You're usually in the chapel, which I can't imagine anything worse than. These that. streams are our firesides. Yes, Hannah. They are. Thank you, Hannah, for the uh, Hannah. Uh, drawing the uh, the equivalents. But these ones are good and fun and cool. Right. Anyway, the dying. The dying. I guess I'll read this. Spencer has died four times, including being stillborn. That's which, his words, not mine. Uh, yeah could be up for debate but whatever this is what this guy is saying we we have all all evidence in the world to believe anything that this guy says at any time <laughs> three of spencer's visions were classic near-death experiences the first one took him back to his pre uh pre-mortal past the next took him to the present and near future the third showed him what would happen in the millennium and distant future because of the personal nature of each of these visions and the fact they dealt with his own journey, this has limited his view of things to come to only those places and events which he would participate. He did not see what will happen in, the, uh, in Europe, South America, or Asia. He does not know the outcome of wars or the results of world events. How convenient. He can't tell <laughs> me who's going to win the fucking World Series this year. Well, what... Use. What the hell is he good for? What use does that give to me <laughs> if I can't bet on But isn't that funny that they have stuff. to make that caveat? Yeah. Like, these are the countries that he doesn't know what's going to happen in. Spencer's L. Ron Hubbard, honestly. <laughs> it's hilarious. Um, if you didn't bring this up, I will bring this Christmas up. Christmas Carol, indeed. Did you talk about sharing of personal revelation or no spiritual events? I just wanted to bring this up because this adds another layer of plausible deniability. Um, like the top thing, uh, there's a, a whole fair LDS, formerly fair Mormon article about this book. Um, and like right at the top is this quote from, um, Oaks, uh, one of the next in line for it to be, uh, the prophet once Rusty kicks the bucket. Um, Debbie and, Donovan and he's you. talking about how usually like the most spiritual experiences that somebody has. And I, usually that varies, that definition varies from person to person, but a lot of people would consider it like a near death experience where they like saw heaven, like the celestial kingdom or things like that usually would be something that most people wouldn't publish or really even talk about or details that they would leave out when they're sharing like spiritual experiences. So and that, that was something that I believed as well. Like the most spiritual experiences you would not share largely with the public. Yeah. It's something that you would share on like a personal basis or like if you were testifying of the truthfulness of the gospel as a missionary, those kinds of uh, situations. Anyway. Indeed. I just wanted to add that in there. So that's kind of what the apologists would be like, yeah, this is kind of bullshit because uh, why would you share this so publicly if it's such a sacred experience to you? Anyway, the future. All right, I can read this one. This one's a doozy. I hope you guys like my Jesus coming soon. Um, so despite the things that he did not see he did see sweeping visions about the future of north america and the overwhelming events and devastations that would cleanse and reshape this country and parts of canada so let's go oh also i was gonna say debbie donovan thank you for your super chat i hope my kids grow up as smart as these two wonderful crazy ex-mormons like me and all listening thank you you're very sweet shout out um so here is a sneak preview of the things that are gonna get talked about in the book 
The events that he foresaw include foreign invasion, a devastating plague, floods, earthquakes, continental fracture, the dividing of America by a new canyon. <laughs> what? Yeah. When we read that one, I was like, you're kidding. This is <laughs> so dumb. The filling of the Gulf of Mexico by a new landmass. You know what that landmass is supposed to be, right? Yes. Okay. Does it come up? No, not here. Okay. I'll, I'll leave it. it will I'll leave it, it a mystery. Those yeah. who know, you know. Changes in weather in the constellations of heaven. The return of the ten tribes. The miraculous return of the saints to build the new Jerusalem. And the New Jerusalem Temple. The gathering of the elect. The miracles of the millennium. The mission and might powers. I might have added a typo in there. Of the 144,000. And the final celestialization of the earth at the end of the millennium. Uh, just a note. The ten tribes being the lost ten tribes of Israel. Yeah. I'm guessing that's not a... a uh, an exclusive belief to Mormonism, but there's an idea that the descendants of 10 of the children of Israel from the Bible uh, have been lost. And in many cases, there are people who theorize that they are like inside of a cavernous earth or something. Just What's the one where they're like in Antarctica or something? Oh, yeah. They're, so, they're like they're frozen being under. held yeah. <laughs> by an ice wall or some stuff, some shit like that. It's. Yeah, the 144,000, I go to J-Dubs, J-Dubs in my head. Yeah, that's what I think of. But the other thing, the tribes also, like, I mean, it's, as is many things in Mormonism, like, just thoroughly anti-Semitic, but you also get assigned a tribe Yeah, when you do your patriarchal blessing. Yeah, so Mormon, and that when you get baptized, you become a member of the church, Mormons believe that you become you're grafted into the family tree Mm -hmm. of Israel and receive the promise um, that God made to Abraham about your um, descendants being as numerous as the the sands of the sea or that stuff. Anyway, so that is very I mean, that is that's not even just like weird Mormon doctrine thing yeah. like that's core Mormon doctrine is the tribes and being assigned one in your patriarchal blessing. Everyone who gets a patriarchal blessing will be assigned one. And usually most people, at least here in the United States, end up with the same one. Yeah. Mo- uh, yeah. Most people end Ephraim. up in Ephraim. A lot of people in Central America end up with Manasseh, Manasseh. because they're quote unquote Lamanites. Um there was somebody in my ward who was raised Jewish and they converted to Mormonism and they received the tribe of Judah. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they received that because they, uh, because they actually received revelation to give them the tribe tribe of Judah, or if the patriarch knew beforehand that she was, (laughs) that she is Jewish and The people who give these patriarchal blessings, we need to do a video on it because the one we did originally was was like really long time ago. Started our channel. It was very very old. But these aren't special people. These are just men who get a calling, and they tell them to basically do a form of Mormon fortune telling. Yeah, basically, it's fortune telling. It's very much scripted. They're given the things to say. They make slight variations. They ask you questions. Like it's yeah, it's hokey shit. Jordan and I got ours from the same person. We did. Actually, somebody reached out to me um, that got theirs from the same guy, too, because she wanted to see, because she was comparing with other people. That dude's got, old as hell. And um, she said it was uh, all really super similar. So, anyway. Yeah. McKay and I compared ours, whoever. which it, was a very scary thing to do, mind you, because you're never supposed to share your patriarchal blessing with anyone. Yeah. It's one of those really spiritual things that you're not supposed to really throw out there for the public at large anyway so let's anyways. continue besties with the big guys one of my ch- assignments for the church has taken me to the church office building in salt this lake city Spencer tom speaking i meet with various general uh, authorities and have come to know and love them personally over the years i have become good friends with one of the members of the quorum of the 12 apostles this is believed to be Neil A. Maxwell, who passed away in 2002. Um, so kind of kind of older apostles, not any of the current ones. Oh, my gosh. Debbie, this comment deserves all my money because I paid more for a lie to dictate my adult life. Same. 
Thank you. We for appreciate us. you. Grid bless you. We're You're in amazing. The same boat. Um, he goes on to say, we became personal friends and we have, uh, and we have, as he inclined to say, broken bread together and spent uh, wonderful times visiting on numerous occasions. I cannot describe how much I hate the phrase broken bread. I, <laughs> it is just the worst. <laughs> what does that say about besties? I love your little friendship bracelet. <laughs> <laughs> Apostle <laughs> says <laughs> to STFU one evening. This is the one that I really wanted Jordan to include because <laughs> I was reading this. I was like, oh, my God, this man does not even see the signs in front of his whole, full, his whole face. He's too lost in the sauce that he can't even recognize this. One evening while alone with him. <laughs> that was my own. <laughs> what were they doing? <laughs> I was prompted to tell him of one of my experiences in reference to the visions and the, the near death experiences associated with them. He listened with great interest and then concluded by telling me it was from God and that I should treasure it up on my heart, write it down and not speak of it until the Lord told me to. He also counseled me to try not to interpret the meaning of it. He said, when the Lord wants you to understand it, he will send someone or give you the meaning. But until then, it's God's will that you keep these things to yourself and don't try to interpret them without further revelation. Now, when I read this, this guy was like, oh, my God, he just validated my experience or whatever. And when I read this, I heard Neil A. Maxwell allegedly saying, oh, my God, buddy, that's so great. But shut the fuck up do not bring <laughs> this up again to me you are an idiot what are you doing i'm trying to say this in the nicest way possible but do not ever tell anyone else ever what you just told me because i can't imagine a larger crock of shit being out there in existence <laughs> frankie and then they kissed <laughs> and then they kissed yeah <laughs> so it's funny because Ultimately, the, the apostles are the ultimate arbiters of what the church is supposed to represent, right? So when this guy and in confidence shares this with one of the apostles and the apostles is the apostle is hearing this and is like, this is not lining up with what we believe. A good friend is saying this to him. He's going to try his absolute best to not offend him in saying, yeah, um, this is apostasy, and if you're out there saying these kinds of things, you're going to get cut from the team. You're not going to be in this church anymore. So, yeah, I'm just trying to be nice to you, buddy. But, there yeah, the, the Dr. Then. Phil, shut the hell up, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I could include the meme but or the actual sound because I didn't want to get copyrighted, <laughs> but... How you're stupid. That. You're ugly. I want to kill you. Give me $200. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Apostle dies. So this is allegedly in 2002 uh, when Neil A. Maxwell died. Obviously, this is speculation because he never names this apostle, which is probably good and would have probably landed him in hot water <laughs> by his family. Yeah. Um, the apostle dies and Spencer is in immense grief of the loss. And then he claims that an angel visits him one night and tells him that he, uh, that his apostle friend doesn't want him to grieve anymore and said, the Lord will send John into your life. He will understand you and your visions. You can tell him all you have experienced. He will help you understand them as well. Just be patient until then. Yeah. And what's the name of the author of the book, y'all? John Pontius. <laughs> Not right. John the Beloved. Not John the Baptist, but John Pontius. Pontius Pilate, baby. Hell yeah. Washed his hands of Jesus' execution. <laughs> Come I on. told you guys the Kobe joke was coming. <laughs> All right. NDE. 1983. Spencer is having kidney problems and goes to have an x-ray with an iodine contrast. While the nurse administers the contrast, he appears to have an allergic reaction, which causes him to not be able to breathe. The nurse calls called blue and everyone rushes into the room. A knife to the kidneys. 
See? Cody joke. That's the Cody joke. Just so we're clear. <laughs> Ramen head. Um, let's see. Oh, NDE is near death experience. If you're stupid like me, <laughs> and you don't know what that means. The next thing I knew, my spirit was sinking down through the table. I had my eyes wide open, not wanting to miss any part of this experience. I just felt my spirit sink until I could see the underside of the table. I didn't want to be under the table. And in an instant, I found myself <laughs> standing beside the procedure table, looking at my lifeless body. Typo. A doctor had, I had not seen before ran into the room, and for some reason I immediately knew that he was having an affair with the nurse who started the IV. This is direct quote from the book. <laughs> Has anybody ever just walked in and you're like, oh, my God, these people are fucking. Like, <laughs> that's, that's what it means to be dead is you just instantly know that people are being unfaithful to like their how, marriage vows. I like how he had to clarify, I didn't want to be under the table. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't want to be under the table. Really? <laughs> really? But it also, I mean, this is all kind of like, there's not a lot about the nature of being um, like post death in Mormonism. No. So this is almost like fanfic that creates lore about that. <laughs> like he can just move in an instant. He mm -hmm. can winnow. Yeah. <laughs> Spencer spills the tea. <laughs> Guys, let me tell you, this is only getting worse. Guys, this hasn't even out. scratched the surface. This doesn't even scratch the surface. It came to me as a surprise uh, that I knew this. I found my mind full of new information that was coming at me more from my heart than from my usual senses. I also knew that this nurse was recently divorced. I knew how much she values uh, and also feared the new relationship with a doctor who was working beside her to save me. I knew she had terrible financial <laughs> problems. I knew everything about her, actually every detail of her life and every decision, fear, hope, and action that had created her life. <laughs> this dude is like, they're fucking. Also, she only has $12.67 <laughs> in her bank account. What is she doing with her money? She's a nurse. <laughs> I looked at the other people in the room and was astonished, astonished <laughs> okay. that I, I was typing really fast. Okay, you should have done what I said. I did eventually. Okay, what did that work better? Yes. Okay, but I was already halfway done by that point. I looked at other people in the room and was astonished that I could hear the thoughts in their heads, uh, uh, hear their thoughts, and know the details about their lives just as vividly. So you die, and instantly you know what's up with everybody ever. Also, I'm not sure why the walls obscured why he didn't know about the affair until the doctor came in. But That's a good you question. Know, there's a, a plot hole in the logic here. Many. Okay. So uh, with the this life one, rehearsal. There's a life rehearsal. And I'm not gonna go into it because it's like every other life rehearsal, the concept that you've ever heard of it before. Like it you walk through all the deeds in your life, the things that you did wrong, the things that you did right, how you made people feel, blah, blah, blah. And so that's a whole thing that we don't even have time to get into. And it's really not that interesting. But this is the part that I did. Oh, my God. I, I busted up at this part. So he goes through this whole life rehearsal from the beginning or whatever. Um, and then this little excerpt. I watched my own conception <laughs> and all of the emotion <laughs> – <laughs> of that moment as with all of this there was no judgment from me or from god i felt no emotion about it except increased compassion for my mother and this is important because i don't know what that means apparently the the marriage between his mother and his father was failing and this yeah, was kind of yeah, like yeah. a last ditch effort or whatever and immediately after being conceived he his father dipped or whatever Anyway, but yeah, he's just like in his vision, seeing his mom and dad doing the dirty to create him. Like, what? <laughs> Can't make this stuff up, you guys. He's real. It makes me wonder if he had seen some s graphic images of the nurse and the doctor oh, committing maybe. sin. Maybe you know. 
you know, maybe he was getting That's all hot and thinking. bothered Your about mom that. had a bad time. Is that why you've got increased compassion? Yeah. <laughs> Not a he, good he's feeling more compassionate because uh, she didn't climax. Sad. Because <laughs> these are conversations we Sad, want to be having with our parents. Know. I feel I feel bad for you, mom, that you didn't. Yeah, because that's know. information every parent wants their child to know. Seriously. Uh, visiting with his wife. <laughs> Here we go. So his wife was out in the waiting room, as the the narrative goes. Uh, I began to wonder if she would be able to sense me or hear me, perhaps, if I moved through her. I asked her in my mind if I could <laughs> have her permission to move through her, even though she was not aware of me. Her spirit said, yes, I instinct instinctively knew I had to have her permission to do this. It wasn't until later that I began to understand that entering another person's body is very invasive and a righteous spirit always seeks permission if it is necessary. Evil spirits wait for opportunities when we are spiritually weak or after we have rendered ourselves vulnerable by disobedience to God's laws and they enter into us in an act of spiritual violence, which I thought was really interesting that you have to have consent to innocently pass through another person's body but you don't have to have consent to know about all of the sexual experiences that other people have had or are having at yeah the same irony time. of that right like <laughs> also loser lisa i love this she said does that count as watching porn in my book yes if you're watching conception yeah i would say so right i mean yeah it's like the weirdest the weirdest way of doing it too but i guess that is it is kind of like a a loophole like you're not you're not you're forbidden from watching porn but, but if God's you see if you see you. your parents <laughs> in <laughs> in unholy union <laughs> in a vision then you know go ahead and I don't know anybody it, yeah. who has ever walked in on their parents <laughs> doing it thinking, wow, I have more compassion for my parents now. It's like, oh, my God, I'm going <laughs> to plop my eyes out of my head and throw them in a river. Not he said he doesn't judge. He didn't even <laughs> judge for the the affair going on between the doctor and the nurse. <laughs> and God didn't judge them, which expressly sorry. <laughs> Anna I, said is God if it's family. <laughs> That's why incest porn is so popular in Utah. All right, guys. Bye. <laughs> we got to shut it down, dude. <laughs> shut it down. Oh, my, oh my God, God, Jordan. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was Jordan this time. That's that's where it's crazy. <laughs> Hannah got me thinking. Anyway, are we On ready to, to go? Parental voyeur porn. <laughs> <laughs> anyway all right spirits and this part this was really boring to read because it was just gabbing on for way too long way too long and repeating things and stuff it was just it was just to make page count honestly mortals are solid and unintelligent looking <laughs> those are his words such literally. a fucking diss on like everybody jordan what's that thing you're shaking it's this is my baby bottle pop. Baby bottle. Baby, baby bottle, bottle pop. pop. Mortals are solid and unintelligent looking. <laughs> Spirits are semi-transparent. And I guess by default are intelligent looking. I don't know. They were spirits or there were spirits uh, there who did not realize yet that they were dead or they refused to accept it. They were these were quite part peculiar to me for they tried their best to act like an a mortal even though it was clear to me and everyone else that they were that they knew they were dead these spirits are dressed like normal mortals they had little glory around them there are also good angels sent from god on missions for him they can conceal their identity and missions so this is like in the waiting room where his wife is and he's looking around and there's like people who are dead who don't know that they're dead yet. It's like that one, the waiting room in uh, Beetlejuice. It's a you weird that concept. Scene? But yeah. it, it lines up with some Mormon doctrine when you think of like um, spirit prison. 
Yeah. So, and I guess that in a sense that does kind of track with Mormon doctrine. Um, there's, I don't know if there's like doctrine surrounding this, but it is at least of the belief of a lot of people that the spirit world is here on earth overlaid um, over the the physical world that we exist in right now. We just can't see it. So essentially we are among all these people who have perished previously, but our eyes and our minds have been veiled so that we can't perceive that stuff. So when you go to the temple and you have like these spiritual experiences, a uh, common term or common phrase that a lot of Mormons use is that the veil is thin. Like you can feel the presence of these people that you are helping on the other side who have already perished. So the veil is thin and that, um, that uh, barrier between the spiritual world and the physical world is uh, almost to the point where it's, non-existent anyway indeed evil spirits you're gonna have to do this one too because i have to pee i drank a lot right before we started so i have to pee again <laughs> come on now okay so there was also evil spirits in the room they were there to tempt mortals disrupt the work of the angels and to cause any harm they could they delighted in their mischief which like what a freaking phrase these spirits had no light about them at all, but seemed to emanate darkness. This is giving shitty fantasy novel. I saw some of these evil spirits appear as a child, others as a man in a business suit or as a beautiful young woman. It became evident to me that the unborn spirits could choose their shape, just as Satan did in the Garden of Eden, by appearing in the shape of a snake. This was the first time I realized that spirits who could never receive a physical body had the ability to appear any way they choose. They chose. They could take on the appearance of a living individual if it helped them deceive or to fulfill their assignments. Now, isn't that interesting? I do delight in my mischief. Yeah, so this is interesting because um, the concept of the pre-mortal life, the pre-earth life, right? Like, either you sided when the plan was proposed, either you sided with Jesus and his plan, or you sided with Satan and his plan. And the people who went with Satan, which was a third of heaven, lost their ability to have bodies because they went with Satan. And if you went with Jesus, which would presumably in a Mormon lens be all of us, then you are able to get your body and we'll have one here and hereafter. But if you were one of Satan's, then you'll never have a body which is like they propose that as like it's such an awful thing and then you read this and it's like oh well they don't have a physical body but they could appear any way they want i mean that kind of sounds cooler than having a physical body yeah i want to i want to be able to shape shift so i mean i don't know uh, did anybody say anything about me going to the bathroom I wasn't watching. Good news, everybody. It is almost colorless. So. Oh, my God. Why did we need it? This stream is so unhinged. <laughs> okay. Here's where things get weird. And we're coming to the end here. I didn't want to do too much. I wanted to try to stay on time. But McKay hasn't read any of this. So you're going to watch him experience this in oh. real time. Oh, you did more than what we read? I did a little okay. bit. Yep. Yeah. I'm hydrated, baby. Okay. Exploring. You should read it so I can. React properly. Yeah, because okay. I won't. My my Vivance is wearing off, so my comprehension will be going down from here on out. Okay, so Mr. is bored, so he decides to start walking around. So he starts walking through walls and exploring and ends up in an office. Oh, yeah. It should, it should be noted that he can walk through walls. Yeah, just, he can walk through walls. It, or I guess he says it's not technically walking through walls, but those what who've read- What would you call it? It's winnowing essentially if you're an akatar fan yeah if you're an akatar fan you know what's up it you just like can be places which for my book people remind me to talk about something at the end okay so as i had passed through the desk again he's passing through objects i realized that it had been made from three different trees i saw each tree <laughs> <laughs> i knew them from their moment the seed germinated until they were harvested milled and crafted into this desk. what <laughs> 
There was a living component in the wood. It was intelligent, but had little will. Well, that would make sense because it's fucking wood. (laughs) It was content to be wood, and it was pleased that someone had chosen it to be shaped into the desk. It was a roll-top desk and quite beautiful. I knew that the desk understood the love the craftsman had put into his work on the desk. A roll top desk is beautiful. I'm sorry. The desk what? also felt pure and worthy because it had never been used in anything that offended God. Oh my God. That's insane. He saw the tree. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really need I really need him to have come in contact with a wooden phallus. <laughs> <laughs> well, it gets better. Also, Caroline said that I peed more than her it, during this stream, and she's weeks away from pushing a baby out. Oh, God. And I'm, I mean, this is the first time I've ever had to go to the bathroom on stream, so it's I'm true. feeling really bad. When I was pregnant, I peed like three times a night. Yeah. It was the worst. Um. Okay. So, hashtag worthy wood, Melanie Nix. That's or Melanie <laughs> Nix, Melanie Nix. That's perfect. I love oh, this. Oh, my God. Worthy Tree wood. Tree fanfic. Dude, this opens up a whole world of fanfic that could be going on about a tree that becomes, I, I mean, we could even do an enemies to lovers kind of thing with a tree and a human. It, that'd be crazy. Next slide. Um, My favorite part. Oh, I, just, I just wanted, sorry, pause. I just wanted to include, uh, this is like not that far out there. Um, it is more of a, uh, a deeper doctrine, so to speak, of Mormonism that all living things have spirits um this includes animals even inanimate objects such as rocks are are spiritual because they were created by jesus or jehovah as the mormons believe Mm -hmm. him to be by the spiritual power of elohim god the eternal father whatever and i'm not gonna say that we're making fun of it in this context because he's saying that the trees germinate because they're mormon you know so yeah in that context it's funny i don't mind or care i even you know support people who might believe that these other things like a tree might have more significant meaning than just a tree you know some of the trees so like just (laughs) vibe with whatever you need to vibe with this is funny because it's in mormon context uh so yeah the lorax is mormon you heard it here first (laughs) <laughs> speaks for the mormon trees okay are you ready okay let's hear it i brought up the cows for me for day one Boo. i understand the emotion and motive of the man who cut it down this is the desk and knew his name and all about his life too as i did anyone who ever touched or used the desk i understood everything about the cotton stuffing in the seat and the leather from the sofa all of it welcomed me and was pleased to communicate its life and how it had come to be that couch yeah if if the cotton if the cotton stuffing were made in the the 1800s, would it still be pleasing to God? <laughs> I understood the several cattle whose hides covered the couch and their lives and their sacrifice. All of that information was within their hides. But that the is... spirits of the cattle were elsewhere, not in the leather. But the cattle were still pleased and content with the benefits to mankind that their lives and sacrifice had rendered. They were pleased to be of the benefit of the children of Adam. <laughs> what? <laughs> so the cows are happy they got killed for the couch. Is what yeah. They, <laughs> they vibe with that because it helped the humans. <laughs> so, if you're just getting what? here, you're not on drugs. This is actually happening. And I just have the biggest question mark in my brain. I wonder <laughs> if, sure, I, Jan. if some some pig out there that was used to make bacon that I had eaten, I wonder if that would be pleased to be of the benefit of me, <laughs> an atheist. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not high enough for this. See, I told you guys this is this is just yeah. wow. And w- I, again, we're barely scratching the surface of the shit. <laughs> It's just Hoagie says, dear humans, not everything is about us. That's the funny part. When you really think about it, almost nothing is about us in the but grand scheme of things. Almost, literally almost nothing. We share as much in common with, I can't believe it's not butter, when it relates to butter. Like, 
Danica, honestly, Tom was tripping. <laughs> yeah, my man. I and it, someone it, said tinfoil Tiara was... said serious LDSD has done the same thing. Like I, you know, I've had friends who have done LD, LSD and said similar things, like with nature yeah. and whatnot. So I don't know what May- he's doing. Maybe he was getting um, ketamine from from our boy Timmy. Maybe he's giving Maybe. the ketamine to to Timmy. Timmy. <laughs> He's administering the Tim. That's the, how we're all connected. Kidney. Anyway. Oh, my God. What okay. do you find out about the people that sweated on that couch? <laughs> Probably how they don't wash Wait, their ass or something. It gets better. Oh, my God. How does it get better from here? It gets this better. is already as great as it gets. Okay. So man-made things like steel and plastic had no voice. So he. That tracks. He. Smoking that LDS. <laughs> he, like, was at least thorough enough with this, but communing with a piece of wood is kind of like having a puppy step on your toe wagging its tail welcoming you with its cute little soul and personality that's what communicating with a piece of wood is like (laughs) for those of you who were wondering if you wanted to have that experience um oh so cute love this so much i'm stroking this wood (laughs) like it's a puppy oh so much personality in this really cheap guitar oh my god Okay, so he said talking with the earth is like having a planet on your body. And he went into this like insane, long, ridiculous thing about how intense and amazing it is. But the voice of rocks and natural stones are ancient. So they're like ancient people and all magnify Christ. So he said, this is a quote. It was more pleasant to experience wood and rocks than humans. (laughs) This so, is this is screaming. I have no friends. <laughs> I don't have friends, and even I don't. How did he get a woman to marry him? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. This is so wild to me. Like I just, you can't make this up. So anyway, if you ever come by a rock, know that they're ancient and yeah. they glorified Mormon Jesus. You know, the rocks are saying hi, so you better say hi back. <laughs> to be nice good night say it back <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah wow okay so okay now we get to the end here i think there's one more after this maybe two i found a few items Four. upon his exploration oh. in the hospital that were saddened by how they had been used by their owners <gasps> a few things had been used in crimes or for <gasps> violent or immoral purposes and their voice included a cry for redemption and justice. It was not a shrill or pe- or piercing or unpleasant sound, but it was unending and carried the vivid details of the injustice. Uh-oh. I knew that the object itself was not diminished or condemned, but it waited with patient expectation for the day of redemption. So these are items. Just like random objects. Yeah. Furniture. Things. Are, but but if it's plastic or man-made, then it would not have. I don't know. So yeah, what what kind of items could he be talking about if the uh, man-made ones don't have a, a voice? Maybe. This dude really needs to just sit down and think through these fucking plot holes. Holy shit! Because he's like, oh yeah, man-made things they don't have a voice. Uh, but now he's suddenly like, yeah, your toys in your bedside drawer. They are really just waiting for Jesus to come back because they are so ashamed of how they were used. Okay. okay. Pick a lane. Next slide. Also, I like this guy convening with Poseidon. That's the only one I could find. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Okay. So, upon his exploration, he finds love letters in the desk. From an affair that ultimately would injure many people, he says. I know the content of every letter and the true emotion and manipulation of the writer, as well as the reaction of the reader. I moved away, not wanting to remain in that stream of torrid details. I went through the couch and it likewise testified of the same affair and unrighteous accounts that had occurred here, some recently. Could not find any place in that beautiful office that was not saddened or offended or crying for redemption. Oh, my God. The couch is talking to him about their steamy affair in the office. Yep. 
I guess the, the nails, the iron and the nails is probably, you know. Also, latex is natural, so wouldn't a, a condom be able to, you know? Does that count? Maybe. Uh, we need more clear lines because <laughs> the lines are blurred right now. We need something that clearly demarks what has a voice and a consciousness and what doesn't. <laughs> you are Wait, thinking... but I thought the couch was happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was happy. <laughs> it was getting some good use. Sad sex couch. Yeah. With the wet with the wet spot on. <laughs> oh my god. Oh man. Okay. Enough. <laughs> I've heard just about enough of that. So you cut that out and you go to your damn room. Because I don't want to hear it. You're not going to sit in my living room and play that bullshit. When I pour me a Diet Coke after work, I'm not trying to sit around and listen to that. <laughs> so I came across this. McKay and I saw this the other day. And I was like, this is the perfect end for this PowerPoint of, I've right. heard just about enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> Try to pour myself a Diet Coke. If you want to listen to that, you go to your damn room. That's how I felt after getting all this PowerPoint done. Of I've heard just about enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we love Mother. Oh, Brittany Broski. Uh, so um. <laughs> <laughs> what did the wet spot on the couch say? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. So that's one of my favorite TikToks. This is just like, the beginning. This is the very beginning of the book. This is one of the concepts that's fundamental to the book of like the inanimate objects having voices, being able to, you know, interpret things from rocks and all this shit and being able to feel whether things are good or bad or whatever. Um, so this is one part of the story but there is much more and there is much more in this arena too when it comes to inappropriate what some would deem inappropriate material and so that's going to be next week and I just can't even wait to see you guys' reaction to that because if you think his perception of inanimate objects is weird just wait until you hear about his perception of inanimate objects that do inappropriate things. Oh, there's real stuff about that. I, yes. n more than just the jokes I was saying. Okay. Yes. So that is, that will be next week. And I guarantee you, you will not be, nothing will prepare you. Because <laughs> Poor toilet paper. I still to this day, even after not having read this book in years, even after not having thought about it very often, I can still vividly remember when I was taught this portion, when I read this portion of the book and my life will forever be changed by that chapter. So, and not in a good way, not in a good I way. It. And especially not for the youth that read this, it gets shared in a very, very bad way. So that is all I have for the PowerPoint for this week. Um, but we've got, we, we, typically go till nine i've tried to be stay more on time with my powerpoints lately so i did good um so we've got 20 minutes to answer questions talk about things oh i remembered something i wanted to share i forgot sharing time. um yesterday we went to the dmv to finally register our car here in colorado <laughs> don't judge me only months later anyway yeah we were walking in and i look over as i'm walking in in the uh, like the rocks out front of the building, I see a dollar bill. And this is how fucking brain broke I am at this point in my life. The first thing that came to mind was like, this is a really obvious plant for one of those little dollar bill um, <laughs> tracts where it looks like a folded up dollar bill. And then it's only one fold. You open it up and it's like, I don't know. You guys probably know what I'm talking about where it's like, oh, confess your sins to Jesus and be saved or <laughs> whatever. And I am so disappointed to report that I was almost more saddened by the fact that it was an actual dollar bill and not one of those tracks because I'd never seen one of those before. <laughs> but it still was a dollar bill, so. 
I posted a little let's go the stream in the discord oh hold on let me pull up hell yeah someone asked um what age would mormons read that so it depends in my opinion it's not appropriate for youth what but channel I am aware of mormons who did have young adults so i would say high school age read it yeah i guess maybe the maybe the rocks were telling me the to look over there you. they're like the rocks were beckoning to me like hey there's a dollar over there <laughs> there's a dollar over there uh yeah those tracks uh yeah it was kind of crazy what was your akatar update oh you you had something to say oh yeah my book update discord is starting we'll pull up that yeah thing. sorry oh wait it might it be pulling up right now baloney i asked what channel it was in baloney oh, Frank, oh general okay hey oh are you stuck okay we're good don't look into the light you dummy you're gonna be blind God, he's just looking right into the light dummy baloney let's see here oh my God. In general chat you guys can't see him but he's literally staring right into it oh my god this is a disaster hey it's the sorting garmy how do i it's the sorting garmy baloney how do i pull this up in like big okay it has it and it's trying to pull it up yeah sorry i'm a discord dummy so he's trying to go through a portal Dead air. I'll send you this. I'll send you this picture so you can pull it up so people can see it. Yeah, Tom has the brain cell <coughs> and he's sitting over there. I don't know what Baloney yeah. is doing. How do I? He's having I a moment. I want to bring this do whole not go thing down up there. here. Hey. How do they do it in? Stop. Oh my gosh. Baloney. Just... He's here. chewing the. Pick him up. He's having. I'm a trying moment. to do this. So, anywho. I have a, um, the mods are saying they tagged you. Oh, there we Tag go. Me. That's what I wanted to do. Sorry. I was trying to bring it up on, oh my God. <laughs> We're just moving along here. <laughs> it's the sorting garmy. It's wood. <laughs> you should, you should have had the. <laughs> the top of it coming out the wiener hole that would have been funny that would not have been i like this nonetheless probably appropriate on discord yeah, to share yeah. on youtube but i think it's hilarious it's a hat there's nothing sexual Stop. about it everybody Baloney. sorry there's chat what's up everybody oh my gosh now that is funny. it national baloney day we have right. to do something you with are that. doing nothing to solve the problem he it's is... time for me to take action i'm just hey. letting him live he's gonna come over here now Oh my nope. gosh. Nope. Show him to the camera. He's in Airedale now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if he'll. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you, Frankie. That was beautiful. <laughs> Let's see if Hi. he'll let me hold him like a baby now. No, nope. you made him mad because you took him away from his All spot. All right, Baloney. Thank you. You suck. <laughs> <laughs> don't be mean to him okay so anyway now that that cat chaos is over with um i do have a book update i'm curious on my um book reader booky bookish people the book homies also for those who want it we have an akatar update because mckay finished it whoa i finished all five of them baby jordan unnecessarily hates on uh mist or sorry silver flames so i refuse to converse with her about that book because she's a fucking hater i don't hate it it's just not my favorite because i don't like nesta Frankie, thank She's you for baloney, and also thank you for showing my art. You're welcome. Also, That's amazing. Sarah J. Mass, we get it. You fucked in high school. I didn't. You know, Silver Flames was <laughs> like, girl was going through it. Girl had some hormones. 
happening during that time. Real talk. Um, but yeah, McKay finished the whole thing, which is amazing for someone who was like, I don't like reading. Yep. So Silver Plains wasn't my fave. Like I appreciate the character arc for Nesta, but I still, she's just not my favorite. <clears throat> okay. So for my other romanticy reading people right now, Yes, Frankie, thank you. We appreciate you. You're awesome. Two things. Number one. Also, welcome to the Telestial Kingdom. Terrestrial Kingdom, Sophia. It's Sophia's life. Um, two series I'm on right now. I finished. So I got, well, three technically. I got into Carissa Broadbent because some of you had recommended her. Holy shit. She's the next Sarah J. Mass. I'm just saying it right now. She, she needs to pick up some new. The thing about romanticy is the fucking cover art for me. But the like, second, the original Akatar covers, I would not, I would never even consider reading it because it just looks like. Yes, I mean some of them sorry, are cringe. Just cringe. But look, this is the me. newer one. That's much better. No, that is also dog shit. No, it's not. <laughs> oh my! God. I will read it because you are recommending it to me. But based on the tie, the the cover art alone, I would never. Yes. <sighs> anyway, so yes, Morgan, read all of the Akatar ones. They're fabulous. They are good. I have um, a highlight on our Instagram too. And so, Carissa Broadbent, I finished the Serpent in the Wings of Night amazing loved it i finished her other series the war of lost hearts trilogy daughter of no worlds children of fallen gods and mother of death and dawn oh my god i don't know how there's not more hype around that series like it is up there with akatar for me war of lost hearts is akatar level it is she that has opinions. good. It is that good. And then, secondly, I just started the Witch Collector series. So I finished the Witch Collector. And then last night, I finished City of Ruin. And I'm vibing with the Witch Collector, too. Like, holy shit. Like, I'm in a book hangover from that couple today. Still. She's on a hangover. It is. It is a lot. And so I'm going to read the third book and then the fourth book's coming out in January. So that's where I'm at with books. And then I read a weird TikTok recommendation book that was very bizarre, but I still read the whole thing. Um, the series is the War of Lost Hearts trilogy, I believe. The first book is called Daughter of No Worlds. Let's see. Yeah, the War of Lost Hearts trilogy. It's by Carissa Broadbent. So that's my book update. Somebody go read The Witch Collector because I'm losing it because there was a massive, massive cliffhanger at the end of book two and book three. There's the book three's novella, but the book that resolves it all doesn't come out until January. So I'm like suffering. <sighs> and Britney Spears. Memoir should be Just here shipped. for me tomorrow. I hope. I think it was the 26th. The 26th. So I'm going to be. Just shipped. Baloney is in a box. Baloney in a box. In a box. Baloney's in a box. Yeah. Camila up above said, uh, hey, McKay and Jordan, what's the greatest earthquake you've ever experienced? I guess I was. I've, I've been in two. One of them, I don't know what it was. It was in Honduras and I was kind of far away from the epicenter. So it wasn't so noticeable to me. Uh, but we were in 2020, in March of 2020, we were, there was a earthquake in Utah that we were only, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 miles away from the epicenter. It was a 5.7, which I mean, that isn't was a frightening. lot, but it scared, it was the worst that we'd ever experienced. It scared the shit out of us. It scared the crap out of us. I do have a link to our Amazon. I'll put in the chat. I have ADHD, uh, ADHD, 
read by audiobook or text text to speech if you softly play certain wordless music or uh, in the background it can he help focus on the audiobook okay that is a, a great tip I luckily I remember starting off an audiobook and I was like I don't know if I can fucking keep focused on this to be able to catch all the details but I don't know sometimes it you just have to get the hang of it everybody's Aww. different so i'm not going to say what works for me is going to work for everybody but i'll post the title hold on based on pokes cards and baby farming for profit but utah's history has these same posts oh uh, that was about cabbage patch kids on postcards that's weird okay i will drop the link britney's book it's gonna be huge 5.7 here in Chile in 2010, we had an earthquake of 8.8. .8. I remember that because I was in seminary and my seminary teacher knew somebody who was serving as a missionary there at the time. And she was reading um, his emails home to us about the stuff that, that was going on. And yeah, it just sounded super awful and scary and I dropped our Amazon in the chat, so if you want to go read my books, I have them all classified in there on with my five-star reads. How do you keep y'all's hair looking so great? Well, I washed mine this afternoon, and Jordan washed hers last night. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of it, is it's, it's very recently washed. It's true. Um, also, unfortunately, usually the key, I mean, I don't do anything with my hair. I wash it, and I condition it, and that's it. He doesn't do any heat. It's all in the all in the product, honestly. I still heat my hair. I try not to. So I will avoid it where possible. Um, like this is what happens if I don't air dry my hair. It gets all curly. So I try not to heat it. I have been doing it more lately and I try not to um bleaching it obviously isn't great for your hair. Like you gotta take extra care of your hair if you bleach it. And I don't yeah. bleach mine anymore. Um as of recent which has been an adjustment for me but you got to use if you're going to be coloring your hair you got to use better quality products which are usually more expensive which is a pain in the butt pain in the ass a squiscar hair i fucking love that amika is what squig elf. we use most often and then i use a lot of redkin stuff that is so dildos olapex if you're going to be bleaching your hair but that has mixed reviews but that's what I used. Jordan, have you read any Spanish authors translated not um, in Spanish? I don't know. I don't think the, I have. The only one I specifically can remember reading is Bless Me Ultima, which is um, a Mexican author, um, which is, it was a good book. It was a long time ago, so I don't really remember what it was about. But I, I think it's the grandmother is like a witch or something like that. Anyway, all my audiobooks are about cults. I have those <laughs> ones on our awful. Amazon as well. Mormon related ones, anyway. Yeah, when we were in that earthquake, Jordan was sitting in our bedroom floor in the basement of her mom's house uh, I was doing, doing her makeup. My makeup and I was in on the, the floor. I was in the fucking bathroom, <laughs> dude. It was so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> It was horrifying. I have earthquake anxiety, and that was one of the main, not the main reasons, but a huge reason for moving oh out of God. Utah. Cause... We were we were just talking about this the other day. Like, yeah. even last year, living in our other house, 2022, two years had passed. I'd be, I'd be sitting in bed and feel what my brain would think is a shake, and I would think, oh, my God, is this an earthquake? Mm-hmm. It was but, horrifying. Yeah, ever since we moved here, it has never crossed my mind. Thank I God. have never... Like, first of all, I was sitting, my ground was, my ground, my ass was touching the ground. So that certainly didn't help, but it was so unsettling. I remember I ran out of our bedroom looking out the window and so did McKay. Yeah, because it was garden level. Because we couldn't figure out what was happening. But the worst part about earthquakes is the aftershocks. Because like the first one was big by our standards, but then our, like the aftershocks of the Utah earthquake <coughs> lasted for months. Yeah. Months. It was crazy. Like, I kept a glass of water, like, in our room or on the table, wherever we were, because then you're constantly feeling, like, 
the ground is shaking. So I would have to check the water to see if I'm crazy or not. Yeah, I am not meant to live where earthquakes are. We are not built for that. No, not at all. I am. We're just built different. I forgot. Here's. Uh, oh, yeah. Here's the picture of Baloney. Baloney looks like he is brewing up a goddamn concoction <laughs> or he's about ready to cast some sort of incantation or something like that. All right. Tag yourselves in the chat, too, because it's uh, partially on here. Check him Make out. It bigger. Look at this guy. That's what oh, she said. Oh, shit. There we go. Yoink. Oh, my gosh. Look, Look at, at him. him. He is... Sorcerer is sorcering, man. He is Look the witch kitty. He's a he's a badass. Do you have it on the screen? Because I haven't seen it yet. I should have. Yeah. Okay. It's just delayed. Um, but yeah. So there's that. Do you know when the next hearing is for Ruby and Jody? I think it's still getting pushed back because of all the. I was gonna discovery. say last I heard it was. I would not hold your breath. I thought it was early November. And it'll probably get pushed back again. There have been some developments. There hasn't been enough that I think warrant another video, but like Chad has officially gotten on Instagram and has an Instagram account that's been verified because his family follows them or follows him. And then Sherry recently, I guess, changed the name of her Instagram account and she mm -hmm. follows Chad now or Chad follows her now, which like wasn't happening before. So weird things are happening. Oh, yeah. I guess uh, Kevin filed a lawsuit against Sherry. He said he would. I don't think oh, he did. He didn't. Okay. He threatened. Well, that's corny. That's corny. It's corny as hell. He did try to press charges against her for taking some shit out of the house. Yes, which, which I think is, is funny. Very corny, too. Goofball. You're just going to disappear for a while and then be mad when somebody yeah yeah doesn't exactly jive with the doting dad image that his yeah. lawyer is trying to create any new tattoos recently or soon nope nah i want to but how we got a mortgage it's not in the fucking cards right now oh my god yeah kevin doing more research I'm gonna do some more research on how that. is this not a robbery buddy uh i'm almost certain that the address on her driver's license is that fucking house dumbass so <laughs> yeah and when's the last time you were in that house compared to when she was yeah, in that house yeah because that's probably going to be different like, oh my curly gosh. katie you may be late but you made it the you'll have to go backwards because yeah we're about to end we're actually done, but, <laughs> um, yeah let's see yeah, Kevin's garbage. Kevin is trash. He's the L collector for sure. The L collector. Yeah. I think those dollar bill religious uh, were put out by Jack Chick. Uh, I think Jen is gone, but she could verify that for me. I'm I'm sure there were so many Chick tracts. Yeah, true. She's the expert on that kind of stuff. That's probably where I heard about it is from Jen. Yeah. But it's been a while ago. I love the cop being like, um, bro, you're being ridiculous. Seriously. Like, I'm sure all of Utah, corny, like ass. all the, like the Utah County police officers and shit. I'm sure they are fed up with them. Yeah. Fed up. So I wouldn't doubt that. Anyway. Yeah. And Pam sucks. Pam. That footage was embarrassing embarrassing and she should be embarrassed and i hope she can like never leave her house again they were very weird the videos of pam she seemed very like didn't even bat an eye when the officers had told her what was happening even though the officers had screwed it up and like confused her it was just a whole very bizarre experience i mean you're seeing like law enforcement's inability to communicate well to each other like in real time like the officer was telling pam that it was her daughter that was arrested for child abuse and so it's just like in every industry is prone to not great communication but for an industry of that importance not having great communication like that's that's concerning 
yeah, and when they're like, oh, yeah, the girls come over for me. Like, not to hang out, but to clean my house. Because I know that's what I do. Like, when I was little, yeah. my mom would just take me to people's houses to clean. Doesn't well, sound sus that, whatsoever. But, yeah. Yeah, that's just ridiculous. Today, I rediscovered frozen gogurt tubes. Oh, 10 hell yeah. 10. I never ate a gogurt that was not frozen in my house, my household. The children yearn for the mines. <laughs> Utah is suing Meta. For what? I would assume it's over something in regards to their anti-porn measures that they uh, put into place this year. I want to know about that. We needed yeah. our house cleaned up, so I picked up two jo- children from different places and had them do it. <laughs> It just sounds crazy. Utah sues Facebook's parent company over addiction. Oh, I can't put this on. Sorry, guys, but I'm trying to hear it for myself. Wow. They're suing TikTok also. Why is he talking like that? This comes on allegations that Meta has violated the Utah Consumer Sales Practice Act. I spoke with the Utah Department of Commerce about the lawsuit. We wanted to do that because we have strong consumer protection laws that we believe, and we allege in our complaint, that Meta has violated. And the Which is what? The violations are really twofold. First, uh, the violation that we are alleging is... So, uh- just to let this so it's not dead air the whole time. Apparently, Meta is suing, or they're suing Meta and TikTok over violations of consumer protection laws. Um, alleging that they're being harmful, violating these laws in a harmful and inconscionable way. Why? I need more info than that. I know. Let's speed this up. Oh my God! Yeah, this is going nowhere. Over the the addictive nature of the the Meta platforms Get and TikTok, literally any they should file a lawsuit against uh, Twitter. They should file a lawsuit against uh, Reddit. They should file a lawsuit against Google for all of their properties and everything like that. Um, you're not supposed to hear. Sorry, because I don't. I think we might get copyright claimed for that i just wanted to be in the know utah is like amazing for like grandstanding behavior like the whole Pornhub thing where you can't like what is the message that you get with Pornhub in utah is it that it doesn't come up at all Um, or is it you have to do like an age restriction or something there's some weird you have to do age verification like you have to send in identity verification oh really yeah or to create to create a source social media uh, profile you yeah, have to 18. also uh verify your age yeah or a, a parent or guardian i think so and it's ridiculous like oh Pornhub won't i don't know if it has changed but um when they first instituted this Pornhub was like nope and i'm not this isn't a comment on the company or anything that they they put out there or anything like that but they recognize that it opens them up to liability for people having their identity stolen, which is very true because they have to provide this sort of verification services. And when people are putting their, their personal information into that website, they're taking on that liability in case that information gets leaked. So they were like, fuck that. We're not doing that. You guys, if you're in Utah, sorry, talk to your government about it. So yeah. Utah is crazy. And they're like, oh, because they have declared pornography addiction a um, public health crisis. Mm -hmm. So that was um, part of their fight against that and um, the influence that social media has on um, young kids, especially school age kids and things like that, which I I totally understand. But it, it feels like it's just really missing the point (laughs) so yeah utah definitely uh 
they love their porn. So anybody who uh, Utah as of this is like a really old article, but in 2009, Utah was number one in online porn subscriptions. Oh, well. Yeah, <laughs> you have to remember that Utah is so incredibly repressed. the B sides of porn sites. <laughs> yeah, and it's fun. It, as soon the the day of that going into effect and Pornhub um, dropping uh, Utah altogether. You can look at the, geographically in Utah, the searches for VPNs skyrocketed. <laughs> so it's like they think people won't find a way. How they do with the worldwide pandemic? <laughs> they found a way. If there's a will, there's a way. Let's see. There's one in Utah. Yeah, it's yeah, it's the same. In the United States, according to Pornhub's 2022 year in review, watches more than any other country. Let's go. Let's see. Interesting. As of 2022, residents in Utah were more likely to search for Mormon porn. Guarantee you that ain't going to get what you think it's going to get. <laughs> that's not a thing, at least. Because that's what... In my or mind, is it just porn with people in garments? Exactly. <laughs> garments. Well, that's why I'm thinking if like if I'm thinking about it from a couple's therapist standpoint, if I have a more in a couple that's like more willing to branch out and is thinking maybe they've decided for their marriage that this is appropriate and they can they're wanting to find something that's not like your typical really intense thing like maybe they're looking for something that's not quite like number one video on Pornhub but maybe it's for this it's for the story for the act the dialogue maybe something softer gentler more sensual yeah. like you know there's a lot of conversation around like porn for women and so that's what I'm wondering is if maybe they're searching for that thinking that they're going to get something that's less yeah graphic or less uh in nature hardcore i guess yeah. i don't know yeah 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 that's what i could see yes or young kids searching that thinking that maybe it will be more appropriate <clears throat> tim i know about it because of a vice spot that ha that came out while i was in college about some production company that does exclusively like mormon themed stuff like in the temple kind of situations or with the bishop kind of well, there was an older I remember I was fucking livid. I was like, this is so disgusting or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. God, hear the groans of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> hear the moans of my mouth. <laughs> and it's super soaking. Super soaking. Anyway. We got, a, we got let's, off on a tangent yeah, really hungry, there, didn't so we? <laughs> we're gonna okay, so. Call it a night. <laughs> exclusive content. Become a member, join our Patreon, our Patreon. I promise that it's worth it. Hopefully, it'll be worth it for you. I can't answer that, but hopefully, was it good it will for be. you? Was it good for you? Um, you can do that. The join buttons at the bottom of the little YouTube video. Or you can go to patreoncom McKay. Um, stream Halloween stream on Monday, right? Halloween With stream on Monday shout out i have some stuff to get work work through we will be doing that so follow us on social media at jordan and mckay on instagram is where i post the most updates check that out you can follow my therapy account where i give general mental health advice not advice general mental health content friendly information friendly information at jordan does therapy on instagram um I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I think that's about it. Anyway, yeah. if you're new here, thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting us. Even watching, commenting and liking our content is extremely helpful and important. Make sure you like the video on the way out. We will talk more visions of glory in a week ish we might be doing it a little later because of monday stream yep but i'll post an update on that on instagram i think that's it awesome we love you stay hydrated 
uh, keep that keep that color to a minimum when you oh, go to the bathroom. And we hit eighty thousand. So Shout out eighty thousand of you, you, wonderful, amazing people. We love you. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'm going to get something to eat. We love you. Good night. Bye. Bye. Oh, 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 oh. There we go.